Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about some tips on picking a toilet. We'd like to thank George Owusu, who gave us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. So the first modern toilet, which had a rim flush design, so the water coming from the tank into the bowl through these tiny little holes around the rim and the bowl, was developed in 1910. Hmm. And you know how many gallons those first toilets hold? A lot. Like five to seven gallons. <laughs> so every time you flush, wow. five to seven gallons. In the 1980s, they passed a bunch of codes, and the average toilet was using only 3.5 gallons per flush. And then in 1994, the new code in the United States is you can't sell a toilet that has more than 1.6 gallons per flush. Hmm. And then in January of 2016, California just passed a law that you can't sell a toilet in California that is more than 1.28 gallons per flush. And they're saying that it's going to save them about 105 billion gallons of water a year wow. in California. So pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. And Georgia, Colorado, and Texas have adopted these 1.28 gallon per flush codes. Mm-hmm. And with these 1.28 gallon or, fl- or less, these are labeled HET, so high efficiency toilets. Mm-hmm. So 1.6 is considered low consumption. The 1.28 or less is HET. And it's wild because of the design. So using less water, the opening in the bottom of the bowl, instead mm-hmm. of being completely circular, right. like, like they've always been mm-hmm. now, they have a lot of weird oblong shapes to create more force. And you actually have to use a special toilet plunger. Oh, you're kidding. So I was talking to Corky, and they have the Corky Beehive Max. And this is a special plunger for these high-efficiency toilets (laughs) because it's a weird shape, so that opening isn't perfectly round. So it's interesting. So they should merchandise those together. (laughs) Yes. The U.S. Department of the Interior says that 2.5% of the Earth's water is fresh water. And only 1.2% is the, of that is available. Hmm. You know, the rest is frozen in the ice caps. Going from a 1.6 gallon per flush toilet, mm-hmm. you're, the average person is going to save about 3,000 gallons per year versus the previous 3.5 gallons. And then if you drop down... Just think about those early jerks in the 1910s yeah. using five to seven gallons. <laughs> Insane, man. <laughs> so if you go to a 1.2 eight gallon per flush, you're going to save an additional 600 gallons per year. Wow. So since there's been all these changes with toilets, Mm -hmm. there's now more that you need to think about. It's not just go to the store, hey, give me a toilet. (laughs) So what are the kind of things? So a great, great story is you need to know your rough-in size. And we were remodeling one of these old homes we bought in Chicago Mm -hmm. when I was investing in real estate. And because it was such an old home, it had a 10-inch rough-in. What is a rough-in? So this is the distance between the center of the main drain. So the main drain that your toilet's sitting on from the center of that to the wall, that Mm -hmm. distance. And the average is 12 inches. So we had just bought this house. We're remodeling it. And I bought a toilet to Mm -hmm. change. And we got it there. And it didn't fit. (laughs) So so when I tried to set the toilet, it wouldn't, you know, the the back of the toilet hit the wall. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't center it. So this house was so old that there was just 10 inches between the center of that drain and the wall. And so I had to go and special order. A, a, <laughs> and I had thrown out the old toilet. Of course. And so, you know, it's in older homes, it's a problem. You can have 10 or a 14-inch rough-in. The standard is 12, so in most hardware stores or home centers, that's what's going to be on display. Mm-hmm. But it's very important that you measure it. And an easy way to measure is just look at your toilet bolts that hold the toilet down to that flange on the mm-hmm. floor and measure from those bolts to the wall. And that's going to, within about an inch, that's going to give you your rough-in. So the rough-in number is going to be on the label on a toilet? Yes. So back to my original question, which you cut me off with that fantastic story about the rough-in. <laughs> Thank you. What kind of other things do you need to be thinking about? Toilet height is another consideration. So the standard toilet is going to be about 14 to 15 inches. So from the top of the bowl to the floor is, mm-hmm. is roughly 14 to 15 inches. 
Comfort height is 17 to 19 inches. What does that mean? So this is actually designed for seniors or people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Comfort height toilets meet the standards of the ADA. So this is Americans with Disabilities Act. Right. And those, uh, an ADA compliant toilet has to be at least 16.5 inches mm -hmm. from the top of the bowl to the floor. And so that's a thing to consider. If you're sh a lot of smaller people or shorter people don't like the comfort heights so of the taller bowls. Right. And then kids, it's difficult for them mm -hmm. to sit you on have a to toilet. Hop up. Right. <laughs> and if you're taller, though, mm -hmm. most taller people love the comfort height. So it's it's one thing to think about. And well, I never really thought about the height before, but we got that American Standard toilet, right. and it's much taller than a regular yeah, toilet. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, and if, if you're used to, let's say, a 14-inch toilet, and you jump to a 19-inch toilet, right. it's it's pretty amazing, mm -hmm. the difference. And especially if you're spending any time, if you read on the toilet, if you're spending any time of it, if you have shorter legs, it can be uncomfortable. Yeah, swinging. So, <laughs> so it's probably not a bad idea to try that out, or to measure maybe maybe a chair in mm -hmm. your home and see what that height is and see where you're comfortable and that'll help guide you to pick your toilet height. Well, some other things to think about too is if you have like a medicine cabinet above your toilet, right. you know, depending on and like a towel bar underneath it like I do, you know, what's that hitting then? Right, exactly. And also some of the, some designs in toilets where you have an extended countertop mm -hmm. from your sink and your toilet slides under there, right. you definitely have to be aware that there's different heights. Mm -hmm. What's something else to consider when purchasing a toilet? Bowl shape is another thing that you need to think about. So toilet bowls can come either round or elongated. Mm -hmm. And you're going to measure from the bolts that hold the seat in place to the front of the bowl. Right. And so a standard or a plain bowl. And sometimes you're going to see a toilet that's marked PB for plain bowl. So this is going to be a standard round bowl. And it's roughly 16 and a half inches from the bolts to the front of the bowl. Mm -hmm. And elongated bowl, so they're marked EB. And this is a seat, or it's going to be a length about 18 and a half inches from the bolts to the front of the bowl. For small bathrooms, a standard toilet's going to fit much better and look better. My if, bathroom's fairly small, right? but I also have the baseboard heaters, right. so I couldn't get an elongated one because I'd <laughs> burn my feet. <laughs> right. Elongated can be more comfortable for people who are larger, older, or men usually like an elongated bowl when they're sitting. Yeah, I'm sure. If you're buying a toilet that doesn't have a seat that comes with it, make sure that you're matching round or elongated to it. Mm-hmm, because that would be a real drag. Right. <laughs> a trip back to the store. Yes, they, they're not interchangeable. <laughs> And if you're looking for one of the top rated, a plastic slow close seat with the pop off hinges, mm -hmm. they're a great way to prevent a cracked bowl. So like these heavy wooden seats sometimes, if you slam it on a bowl, especially an older toilet, right. it can crack it and then it makes it much easier to clean the, the seats with that pop off hinge. Mm -hmm. When you're picking a toilet, another thing is either a one-piece or a two-piece. Mm -hmm. So with a one-piece toilet, the tank and the bowl are fused together. It's one seamless toilet. But it's, it's actually seven to ten individual parts, but they, have, they fuse it, and so it has a smooth exterior. Yep. So it's pretty interesting how they design them. And you don't have to put together a one-piece like you have to with a two-piece. So you've got to mm -hmm. put your tank onto the bowl. And you're usually going to have two or three bolts with rubber gaskets when you build a two-piece. Some of these one-piece have a lower profile, so you can fit under, you know, like if you have the vanity extension in your right. bathroom, it's smaller. And for smaller bathrooms, a one-piece toilet is usually what most people will pick. And many people say that the one piece are easier to clean because there's no little grooves that right, yeah. you know, dirt and stuff can get under. And with a two piece, they're usually less expensive than a one piece. Mm -hmm. Something else you get to pick when you're buying a toilet is the flushing type. Right. So can you explain that? So the most common in the U.S. is either gravity or pressure assist. Mm -hmm. Gravity flush toilets, they're the most common. The weight, the speed, and the volume of water moving from the tank into the bowl Right. It's what's flushing the toilet. Mm -hmm. With this gravity flush, you have two types. So you have siphonic and washdown. Most toilets in the U.S. have a specially shaped trap that helps pull the water and the waste out of the toilet as the water passes through mm -hmm. it. So this is called siphonic. And then you have another style called washdown. And this is just the weight and the speed of the water pushing the waste down the drain. So subtle difference, but with a washdown style, they're usually the highest rated for not clogging. Okay. So if clogging's a problem with you, you might want to consider a washdown toilet. 
And then you have pressure assist, which is about 10% of all the toilets sold, and they use compressed air to help push the waste out of the trap. So they have this air-filled tank that fills with water when you flush, and then that air pressure is held until you flush again. Mm -hmm. And then when you flush, it forces this water very quickly into the bowl. Yeah. And so you're usually actually using less water in mm -hmm. most cases, although it's a lot louder yeah. than, <laughs> than a regular <laughs> toilet. And then you also don't get, because there's some areas of the country where there, people really complain a lot about condensation mm -hmm. on their tanks. With these pressure assists, everything is being held in a small container, so you don't get any problem with condensation. Most of the pressure assist toilets use about one gallon per flush. Hmm. If you want to know the flushing power of a specific model, because who wouldn't? You you can look up on the website. It's called allianceforwaterefficiency.org, mm -hmm. and they're going to give you the map. And it's capital M, small a, capital P. And what is that? And that stands for maximum performance. Mm -hmm. And this was developed in 2003. And most hardware stores and home centers are going to have this map rating on the toilet or the label. Mm -hmm. And to be qualified for the Water Sense program. So this is a program set by the EPA. These are your best flushing toilets. They have to have a minimum score of 350. And then the maximum score is 1,000. So that's kind of the range you're looking for on a toilet that really flushes well. Mm -hmm. And that's based on, so the 350 is 350 grams of waste, so about 12 ounces of waste. Mm -hmm. And the average adult is going to have about 9 ounces of waste mm -hmm. at a sitting that needs to be flushed by a toilet. Way too much information here. <laughs> Another thing to consider is either a single flush versus a dual flush. And what does this mean? Dual flush is going to give you the option of either a, a full flush or a partial flush. So a partial flush, let's say you just urinate, you, mm -hmm. you just need a small amount of water to move that down the drain. A full flush you're going to use for waste and paper. So the dual flush was invented in Australia in 1980. Mm. So they were having such a problem with these constant droughts that they developed this. And then it became code in 1993 that no one can sell anything except a dual flush in Australia. Wow. Isn't that wild? Mm -hmm. And so New Zealand, Singapore, Israel, and Ireland also adopted this. If you compare a single flush toilet that's 1.6 gallons per flush to a dual flush, the dual flush has two options, so 1.6 or 0.8 mm -hmm. per flush. Studies show that with a dual flush toilet, you're only using 6.9 gallons a day compared to 9.5 gallons with that single handle. Interesting. And then you have to be aware some of these are going to have a standard looking handle that you can either push up or down, mm -hmm. or it's going to have a dual lever, like an inside lever and an outside lever, or it's going to be a dual button on the top of the lid. I saw an interesting flush kit from Kohler. It's touchless. No way. So you just place your hand over the sensor that you put on the top of your tank, mm -hmm. and you can convert almost any toilet to this. So it has this unit that you throw batteries into. It goes underneath the top of the tank. Mm -hmm. You put this little pad on top of the tank. It's just a small little round disc. And when you wave your hand over it, it flushes your toilet. <laughs> cool, huh? Totally. Science fiction. <laughs> What are some top-rated toilets? When I was doing the research of which toilet to pick for my mom, I saw that American Standard has Optum Vormax. So Vormax, V-O-R-M-A-X. Mm -hmm. And this is the toilet with two flush valves. So you're getting a very strong flush. It doesn't have rim holes. It has this little side jet. Mm -hmm. So it keeps the whole bowl clean. And what I liked about this for my mom is it has this permanent finish to inhibit bacteria growth or, or stains. So it, it stays clean, very mm -hmm. nice for her, so she doesn't have to clean. It's ADA compliant. It's one of these higher toilets, so it's easier for her to get up and down. And it has one of the highest bulk removal scores. No so way. So 2.2 pounds of waste using only 1.28 gallons per flush. Wow. Fantastic. <laughs> so that's a good one. So American Standard has their two new toilets that they're just launching. They're the ultra-high efficiency toilets that only use 1.1 gallons per flush. <laughs> and they've already received the MAP Premium Certification. Wow. This comes in dual flush or single flush, and it's called the H2 Option Tank. So it's H2 and then a capital O, P-T-I-O-N, so it looks like H2O mm -hmm. Tank. And those were, are rated very high, and they haven't even launched them yet. American Standard Clean was rated very high. The Toto, T-O-T-O, -T -O, Drake 2, 
is a 1.28 gallon per flush. And this has two rim nozzles and a three inch flush valve. Hmm. And it has a higher drop than standard flush valve. So the, the height where it drops and the trap weighs. So the size of the actual S trap inside the bowl is two and one eighth inches rather than a standard two inch. Hmm. So it allows stuff to move through that much quicker. The American Standard Champion 4. Now this one actually has a two and three eighths inch trap inside the bowl and a four inch flush valve. Mm. And then on an upcoming podcast, we'll talk about all the new changes in toilets because a lot of these flush valves have really changed. So when you have a leaking toilet, it's not as easy as just going and getting a universal flap yeah, right. There's no like more. in the old days. But back to top rated toilets, the Kohler Wellworth. And this has a canister style valve. This is called their Aqua Piston. And this was highly rated. It has a very unique thin seal. And so less material is exposed to water. So their seals last much longer. Hmm. They're rated very high. And this is very similar to the toilet we put into your condo. Right. And it does a very nice job. The Toto Ultra Max 2 and the Toto Ultra Max were rated very high. And these have a special glossy finish that fights mold, bacteria, and stains. Nice. The Glacier Bay Model N 2316 was rated very high. And then as far as pressure assist toilets, the Kohler Highline Classic was rated one of the best. Mm -hmm. So in a couple of the plumbers forums I was looking at, they were recommending Toto, American Standard, and Kohler as the toilets where they had the least callbacks on. Mm -hmm. Most of these toilets, you've got some that are going to start as low as $250 now, but mm-hmm. the average is probably going to be around $400. Cha-ching. <laughs> so after you buy your new toilet mm-hmm. and you spend $400 on it, All right. you don't want to break it. So do you have any tips on how to install it? So when you're replacing a toilet, the first thing is you want to turn off the shutoff valve under the old toilet, and mm-hmm. you're going to want to flush it, hold down that handle. I would always use a plunger to get the excess water out of the trap, mm-hmm. because if you lift the old toilet and if you tilt it off center at all, the water starts to pull out, and then if There's you have a, a mess. yeah, if you have a siphonic style, mm-hmm. it's going to pull the rest of the water out <laughs> after you. So you want to put a small bowl then underneath the supply line to the tank. You're going to unscrew the supply line going to the fill valve on the old toilet. And you're going to remove those two nuts that hold the bowl to the floor. Mm -hmm. And then the night before, if you're thinking about doing this night before, you can spray those nuts with a little liquid wrench or blaster. Right. And it's going to break loose any, uh, any buildup in their corrosion. If the nuts won't turn or the whole bolt turns when you try to unscrew it, you can cut it off with a hacksaw. And if it's hard to get to with your hacksaw, I just take like a brand new blade. And I like using a, you know, a fresh blade when I'm cutting these off. Mm-hmm. And even grab just a pair of leather gloves and hold an individual blade by itself right. to cut through. It's going to take time. so you know, Like a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so be patient if you have to cut it off. And We've then, done quite a few videos where I've had to wait a long time for you to cut off. <laughs> so it turned into troubleshooting yes. videos when we did a lot of them. <laughs> but I would have newspaper or plastic bags handy to set the old toilet onto. Most toilets are going to have a wax ring as the mm-hmm. gasket. So you're going to need disposable gloves, cheap plastic scraper. Right. And you're going to scrape off that, all that old wax. You know, have that fairly clean as we set our new gasket on there. I like to replace the toilet bolts every time I change uh, a toilet. Mm -hmm. And then I always add an extra stainless steel washer and nut. Why? And I'm going to lock down those bolts onto the toilet flange. So that main flange that's connected to the main drain on the floor. When you're seating your toilet, you can only see one hole at a time. So as you're lifting this heavy thing, Mm -hmm. you know, you're trying to move it onto these bolts or over the bolts. If you accidentally hit it, they push loose, they push free. So what I like doing is locking those bolts in place. It makes it much easier to install it. And then if you ever decide to change it down the road, that bolt is going to stay in place and Mm -hmm. allow you to unscrew the nut very easily. So where does it go? Down the main drain if you knock them loose? No, it's going to be off to the side of Mm -hmm. it. But if you're on the second floor, it's going to knock it in between the first and second floor. If you're on the first (laughs) floor of the basement, many times when I first started investing, Mm -hmm. I'd hit the bolt and I'd have to run down to the basement (laughs) to get it. A new type of toilet bolt you can get is the Bigfoot Toilet Bolt. Mm -hmm. And this is a thick, rust-proof aluminum. And it has a special bottom that either locks into the plastic flanges or it won't spin in the iron flanges. Mm -hmm. So that's a nice design. Now you're going to take your toilet gasket and you're going to put it on the toilet flange that's on the floor. If you're using a wax ring, I would always get one with the plastic flange built in. And that's going to lock it in place so Mm -hmm. it doesn't slide around. 
If you want to use something that's goof proof, you can get Sani Seal, and it's S A N I S E A L, and this is a waxless, flexible seal, and this is repositionable. So if you didn't seat the toilet correctly, like with wax, when you compress that, it does not spring back. Right. Yeah. So it's one and done. With Sani Seal, it'll actually spring back. So if this is the first time you've ever reseated a toilet. Mm-hmm. Also, Fluid Master and Corky have wax-free seal kits, which are repositionable. Yeah. And they have rubber seals and foam rings, mm-hmm. so you can adjust them to different heights. Well, because that's part of the problem is that with a wax ring, is if the floor flange is at a certain level, you might have to use two, you might have to use the really thick ones. Right, exactly. And in fact, one of the key things you're looking at when you take off the old toilet is where is the toilet flange that's part of your main drain? Mm-hmm. Where is it in relation to your floor? If it's even or up to a quarter inch below, because when you add new tile right. in your bathroom, then the floor is higher than the flange. Mm-hmm. So for a wax ring, if you have even with the floor or up to a quarter inch below, you can use a standard wax ring. If it's deeper mm-hmm. than a quarter inch, then you've got to use one of those double thick right. wax rings. You can also stack two, and that's another reason why it's nice if you have that plastic flange, you can mm-hmm. it, they grab each other. If you're using Sani Seal, you can use it if it's even to three eighths below. With Corky, the wax free, it's even to three eighths below. And with the Fluid Master wax free, it's even to a quarter inch below. All three of these styles of the wax free toilet gaskets are designed wider than a typical wax ring. Right, right. So they so, actually grab the toilet bolts. Right, they actually have holes in them that hold the toilet bolts in place. Right, and I think that's a great feature, but I still like adding an extra stainless steel washer and nut and then lock those bolts in place. Mm-hmm. When you're ready to seat your new toilet, you're going to lift it up and you're going to straddle it. You're only going to be able to see through one of the holes in the bottom of the bowl at a Mm -hmm. time. Have a helper, if you can, help guide the other side. But if not, you just get it over it, wedge one on one side, look on the other side, and then drop it straight down. If you have a helper, it's nice to have them stand or sit on the bowl while you tighten those nuts. Right. And you definitely don't want to over-tighten them because you will crack the bowl. Mm -hmm. And it's just devastating, (laughs) especially now with as expensive as they are. Right. So you want to snug it down and then do not over-tighten it. The way we're going to test to see whether it's tight enough is you're going to stand back and you're going to grab the front of the bowl of the toilet and you're going to just lift slightly. If there's any movement... You're just going to snug it up a little on both sides. Mm -hmm. You're going to re-grab it, lift it again, and just go back and forth until it doesn't move. Well, because they're so heavy, these toilets, I don't think people really understand how fragile they are. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's just clay. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So be careful. Before you connect your supply line, I would put the end of the line in a bowl or a bucket. I'd turn on the shutoff valve and run some water, flushing out any debris. So especially if you're in an older home, Mm -hmm. any rust or anything, a lot of times when you turn off these valves, it'll shake loose some particles. So flush it out into a bucket first and then connect your supply line. And you only want to hand tighten it to the fill valve on the toilet snug it up and then we're going to turn on the valve we're going to test it a couple times flush it once or twice Mm -hmm. and just make sure it doesn't drip if it drips just put a slight turn on it with you can use an adjustable pliers and just keep snug it we don't want to over tighten this because you can turn and rotate that fill valve inside Mm -hmm. and depending on the style you have you can push that float against the side of the tank right and then it's not going to fill properly If you have a supply line that's the old plastic coated ones, you want to replace those. Those are no longer Mm code. So you want to use something with a braided stainless steel. And then if it's old, if it's 10 years old or older, I would just change the supply line so that you don't have problems. Make sure you're getting one labeled supply line. Yeah, yeah. In fact, well, if you're running to get a new supply line for your toilet, make sure it's seven eighths on one side, and then you need to know what size your shutoff valve is. Mm-hmm. Most shutoff valves are going to be three eighths compression. If you don't know, you can get a universal, but a supply line to a toilet is a different size than a supply line to a faucet. You also need to know the length. Right, exactly. Do you have anything else to add? Before you buy a toilet, make sure that you check your rough-in distance. The Mm -hmm. average is around 12 inches within an inch. Think about your toilet height, so you might want to grab a tape measure and a couple of chairs, (laughs) see what you like. Bowl shape, whether you like a one or two piece. And then flushing power. I would always look at the rating of that MAP test, so the Mm -hmm. capital M, small a, capital P. And then whether you like a single or dual flush. Yeah, you got options now. (laughs) 
<laughs> you can save the planet with the water. There you go. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. You can download our new book, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, book two. And we really appreciate all the downloads we got this last week. We were number one in home repair. <laughs> That's pretty Why cool. That's we're, cool. We're best-selling authors. At least for a day or so. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> if you'd like to subscribe to the podcast, you can subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. If you'd like to email us, you can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Do 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 do